so I have two weapons in my hands. They are exactly the same weapon. I have buffed them both up to level 24. I have duplicated Sapuku to run that on both of them, purely so they scale with Arcane. And just quickly before we do get into the weapons, I want to show you exactly how lucky I got obtaining these. There is no way. You're j what? Uh, <laughs> I I didn't mean to do that. Like totally didn't mean to do that. I'm actually speechless. So the, the, the reason you've seen this reaction to the start of the video, I was expecting, like typically with a farm in Elden Ring, you would see the farm lasting between half an hour and maybe two hours. Some people have to farm even longer. And I know my arcanes are 50, so my discovery is 150, but I never ever thought I would be able to grab two of these weapons in a single run of this farm. But these are the weapons we are taking a look at in this video. The Beastman's Curved Swords. They will scale primarily off strength and they also scale a little bit off dexterity. I'm still completely baffled about <laughs> me getting these. I, I set myself up, grabbed a drink and everything and I thought, okay, I'll be sat here for at least half an hour farming for these. But I did manage in my first run to get two of these swords to drop. You'll see the requirements, 13 strength, 11 dex. I'm now going to go and get these leveled up, and then we'll have a look at exactly what they do. So the weapon we are taking a look at, or the weapons, are the Beastman's Curved Swords. As you can see, plus 24, they both run Seppuku. I have one in my main hand, one in my off hand, and by equipping Seppuku, they now scale with Arcane. They have a blood loss build-up of a 108, and one of the best things about these weapons is that you do not have to go through to New Game Plus to dual wield these bad boys. The only requirement you have is making it to Crumbling Faramazula, which is over on the far right hand side of the map, is really really far into the game. And you do have to farm these, so if your arcane's not too high, if your RNG just is absolutely dreadful, it might take you a little while. But if you are looking for these weapons, head to Crumbling Beast Grave. And as soon as you like enter the site of Grace, you come out the doorway, you turn right, you kill them enemies. So to get to Crumbling Faramazula, you have to make your way to Mountain Tops of the Giants. There's going to be a lot of progression in the game. When you get to Foot of the Forge, you have to go through and take down the Fire Giant boss. From the Fire Giant boss, you need to head up to Forge of the Giants. And you will need to talk to Melina, you'll need to commit a sin and basically make a lot of progress in the game and then it will bring you over to crumbling beast grave or you'll start off like basically this sort of section and you just have to make your way to crumbling beast grave and then just farm those enemies you'll get your hands on these swords so with these swords on your build it's going to be based around blood and blood loss build up and all that sort of stuff so i would strongly recommend you run shard of alexander it's going to greatly boost the attack power of your skills I would then run Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. It greatly raises attack power with successive attacks. I would also put that with the Ritual Sword Talisman for the first hit being a lot stronger. And then I would run Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Blood loss in the area will increase your attack power. If possible, I don't have it. I'm locked out on this character. I would get your hands on the White Mask as well. You will have to obtain the White Mask before you take down Mog. If you do kill Mog, you are locked out until New Game Plus. There is a separate video on the channel for exactly how to get the White Mask. Shard of Alexander, you have to do Iron Fist Alexander's quest. You can kill him early and get a less potent version of this exact talisman, but I'd recommend doing the entire quest. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, you get this for assisting Millicent in her quest. For the Ritual Sword Talisman, you'll have to make your way to Erdtree Gazing Hill in the Altus Plateau region. Come down to Lux Ruins, take down the boss there and you'll get your hands on the Ritual Sword Talisman. And then also for the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman, you will have to make your way to Lendal Catacombs and fight the boss in there. 
When it comes to your Flask of Wondrous Physic, I would recommend running the Green Burst Crystal Tier to boost your stamina recovery speed, and the Opaline Bubble Tier, so that you can negate damage received for the first hit, so the Ritual Sword Talisman basically buffs for longer, because if the hit isn't strong enough to do that much damage, you're going to not take any damage at all. So if I pop my flask, and we come down here and we use the left bumper attack, we're going to do double slices. If we just go up to the back of an enemy without sprinting, you're going to see double slashes all the time. I will show you on stronger enemies, so that you can see exactly how much damage we are dealing, because these enemies do not take a lot of damage whatsoever. So, we are now at Karia Manor to show you this, and if I use Seppuku, obviously it's going to take away Ritual Sword. But, if I start attacking this guy, you'll see that blood loss build up. And you'll see just how fast you are taking enemies down. If you want a replacement for Ritual Sword, because using Seppuku will obviously, as you've just seen, use some of your health... Some of the other talismans I'd recommend is Green Turtle. It'll raise your stamina recovery speed even further. You can also run the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, which will restore health over successive attacks. If you wanted to run Green Turtle, and then you want to take the Green Burst Crystal Tear out of your flask, what you could do is run something like Crimson Burst, which will steadily restore your health for a limited time. Or you could run the Crimson Crystal Tear, which will restore half of your total health. So even if you didn't really want to run Green Turtle, you didn't like you're not too bothered about the stamina recovery, but you still want to run Ritual Sword, then what you can do is if we come out here one more time, you'll see that I've lost quite a bit of health. So if I pop a flask with this big guy, if I want to use Seppuku, I'm gonna lose some health. Then I pop my flask. And I'm going to get that health back. So Ritual Sword comes back into play. And then you can just keep doing the left bumper attacks. And you saw the amount of damage it dealt in such a short amount of time. So now we're in Kaelid. We're at the Isolated Merchant's Shack. And I've taken Ritual Sword off. I've got Godskin Swaddling Cloth on. What I'm going to do is come out here. And I'm going to use Seppuku. I'm then going to pop my flask. And we're going to go for this guy. So you'll see how much of the damage we didn't take. And just look at the blood loss build up. Providing I don't die, he's going to kill me. Yeah, showcases of weapons never go perfect. So again, what we're going to do is Seppuku. We're going to pop our flask. And then I'm going to run in with a heavy attack there. There we go. You'll see how much easier it was to take him out there. Second time lucky. Which seems to happen a lot on this game. Look at that. 3,500 in a jumping left bumper attack. There we go. It is like every two attacks, you're going to proc bleed. If we come to this guy here, and we try and avoid his attacks. If I do a jump in left bumper, if he doesn't... What are you doing up there, dude? Look at that, 2800 in one attack. And then I just absolutely ruined his face. Like these swords, dual wielding, they're such like... You're getting quick attacks, so the successive attacks will boost your health if you're running something like the Godskin Swaddling Cloth. Obviously, you have to, like, you're really, really agile as well. You have to be careful doing anything with pretty much any weapon in the game. But, like you've seen, I have died using these. It's not perfect. You're not going to be able to just wipe every enemy out in the game in, like, one attack. But then, if you've got this with the White Mask and Lord of Blood's Exaltation, these two work together. So their benefits stack. So the blood loss in the area increases your attack power. Pair it with White Mask. You've got, like, amazing results. If you wanted to, you could even run the... I believe it's a Claw Talisman that boosts your, like, attack power with jump attacks. Or you could even run the... If I switch my chest out quickly... 
You could even run the Raptors Black Feathers chest, which, if you have a look at the second paragraph, strengthens your jump attacks. You are going to be jumping a lot when you are running these, and it might not go well, but you never know. We'll just quickly uh, have a look at Black Blade. So if I use Seppuku, I pop the flask, then I run in with a jumping LB. You can see it. this is a decent amount of damage for this guy. I mean, it's not as much as a lightning attack against him, but it's not dreadful. I'm still trying to showcase weapons and stuff against him without actually taking him down. Just purely because he's a really strong enemy with a load of health, so it's nice to showcase things against him. But yeah, I, like if you're running a bleed build in Elden Ring, I, I suggest going to get these swords if possible. They only weigh four, so they're not going to be massive on your equip load or anything like that. Even dual wielding, it's only eight weight. And if you pop Seppuku on, they can be run on an Arcane build because they've got a 108 blood loss build up. Every two hits, I'm managing to proc a bleed attack. So remember, if you want to get your hands on them, just very quickly, you go to Crumbling Pharaoh Missoula to Crumbling Beast Grave. As you come out of the Sight of Grace room, you turn right, you take down those enemies there, and it's just a case of RNG. But what we are going to do is leave the video there. Let me know the state of your RNG in the comments. Is it good? Is it bad? I had this a lot in a previous video on the channel. It took me like an hour and 45 minutes to get hold of a sword. A lot of people managed to get it in their first run. So fingers crossed, I do wish you good luck farming anything in the game. If you are interested in more Elden Ring content, there's plenty on the channel. I've got a playlist with lots and lots of videos for it. If you want to easily navigate to one of those videos, then click one of the videos in the end screen, which is just coming up. If you have enjoyed this video, leaving a like is always appreciated. And if you want to see more content from me, then sub to the channel and turn notifications on. And that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah.